beautiful life. Thank you, Lord, for beautiful people. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful mind, a beautiful spirit, a beautiful presence. Thank you, Lord, you make all things beautiful. We give you all the glory. Hide me, Lord, behind you, the beautiful. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to share a few thoughts today on shaking heavens and awakening earth. Amen. Shaking heavens and awakening earth. In Haggai, it's been mentioned today. Thank you, sisters, for using that verse. Haggai, page 1218, in case you're not sure where it is. Page 1218. Amen. <laughs> In your Bible, yeah. In my Bible, in yours, it might be a bit different. Page 1218. If you can't find Haggai, you can look in the beginning. Don't be embarrassed. God says, I will shake all the nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. Meaning Jesus. It's not, I like the divine confidence of Jesus, that he got enough confidence to call himself the desire of all nations. You know, so young men, you would say, I don't think she would desire me. Well, we need to have the confidence of Jesus. Amen? Amen. But he said that he is the desire of all nations. Right. And all people would come to him. I like the confidence of Jesus. Amen. What a confident man. Right. You would be living in days where the shaking of a man's confidence Ladies are screaming saying this, but especially in America, women are rising up to put men down. They really are. That's because men are not standing up, by the way. <laughs> if a man is standing up, then nobody can put him down. So as men, we need to stand up and be men. Amen. Not sure what a man is. Just look in the Bible, it says in the beginning God created a man. He didn't create <coughs> Adam and Steve. Created Adam and Eve. I'm just getting to his slogans. Amen? Amen? You know these things. They don't teach us in school. So the Bible says that, that the Christian will be a fool. In the days to come, the Christian will be a fool. The prophet will be a foolish man. So what I'm saying might be a bit different to what you hear by the, the educated stupid. God created man to be a man and a woman to be a woman. And when a man is all man, you can be all woman. Right. You don't have to be women. You don't have to be a, a man and a woman to get your man to be a good man. That's right. You don't have to right. be a man and a woman because your man is no longer a man at home. That's right. You're a good woman because God made you all woman. Right. So be all woman. Yes. Amen. 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 And be confident as a woman. Right. If you're never a gospel singer, be confident as a woman. Man, if you're never a preacher, be confident as a man. Right. You don't have to preach to be a man. That's you're just right. a man because That's God made right. you in his image. Right. In his image, he made you as a man. Emmanuel, right. I like your name. Eman, you well. One man in God. Amen. The God man. I like your name, Emmanuel. Why didn't I have Emmanuel? I will call Paul Emmanuel. Amen. I'm glad to meet you, Emmanuel. You have a great name to live up to. That's Amen. Right. Right. Emmanuel, the God man. All men should be like God. Amen. All men should be like God. There's a God in every man. Mm. And in God, there's the man, Christ Jesus, the man God, the God man. Mm. I love that topic. So you stirring me up today. <laughs> I'm even you call Emmanuel. You're making me think that this is not in my notes. <laughs> Emmanuel, in every man, there's an Emmanuel, isn't it, my brother? Amen. Amen. There's an Emmanuel in you, my brother. Right, there's right. Emmanuel in you, my brother. My brother. There's an Emmanuel in every man. And the moment you try to be a woman, you step upon him. You put him back in the dirt. Oh, that God will raise up. The church is the only people preaching against the tide today. The crazy, foolish preachers preaching against... Anyway, let me change the subject. I will shape all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations... And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Desire of all nations. Oh, glory be to God. Desire of all nations. Haggai 2, verse 7. And I will shake, fill this temple. Uh, verse 6 says, once more, 
It is a little while and I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land. God is shaking up systems, shaking up governments. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. When we look in, uh, in scripture, we find that heavens and earths are talked of as in Genesis as the physical earth and the physical heaven. But when it comes to prophetic terminology are spoken by the prophets in the Old Testament, when they use the word heaven and earth in prophecy, it doesn't mean that up there and this down here. It means ruling powers, heavens and earths. You see, heavenly kingdoms, earthly rulers, or earth, heavenly rulers, and the people who obey the heavenly rulers. It, it, it speaks of uh, uh, rulers as in wicked, wickedness in high places. They are, in effect, what they would call heavenly yet ungodly powers. So uh, God is saying, I'm going to shake heavens and earth. And uh, we find that in today there is many shakings in, in, in nations of the world and they are beginning to shake Amen. because they're temporal, my brother. That's right. The temporal governments. Communism will come, communism will go. Obama will come, Obama will go. Trump will come, Trump will go. You right. Zimbabwe leader have gone and another one has come. That's right. And sometimes one is as bad as the other, if not worse. Twice the devil in them. That's right. You see, but God is shaking heavens and earth. That's right. You see, because he owns everything and he will not be shaken by what That's Donald right. Trump does. Amen. He will not be shaken by what Theresa May doesn't do. And God will shake the worlds all by himself. Amen. And I will shake them, he says. Amen. Do not be afraid. With a Brexit, making an exit, don't worry about it. You know, our rhymes, don't it? Don't worry about it. You see, don't worry about it because God is shaking everything temporal. That's right. Temporal, temporal, it's temporal, temporal. Mm. Your sickness is temporal. Mm. Your trouble is temporal. Mm. Your problems are temporal. Mm. Oh, everything you've got is temporal. That's right. Nothing lasts forever, only Jesus Christ. That's right. Only Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah. And we say, see, in this world, we see people rising up and, and trying to uh, uh, rewrite the Constitution in America. I, I love America. I, I love it. It's in my blood. That's why I love it. <laughs> but they're taking away the freedom, the land of the free and the hope of the brave. So as a preacher, I've got to stand up and tell you, once more, God, do it. God wants more do it. Amen. That we are people on pilgrimage to the land of the free. Mm. And this is the hope of the brave. Mm. They don't like us being free today. Do they? They don't like us being free today. Once the heavens and the earth. <coughs> heavens speak of ruling powers and the earth. Calm down. <laughs> heavens speak of ruling powers and the earth as those who are ruled. So when it talks of heavens being rolled as a scroll, it's talking about powers being concluded and ended. The heavens shall be rolled up as a scroll. Well, the heavens will always, if they were physically rolled up as a scroll, there'd be no more earth. Because heaven can't exist without the earth, and earth can't exist without heaven. That's why you can't have heaven on, on earth unless we've got Jesus in our heart. We can have a bit of heaven on earth today. Oh, because there's a God in heaven and there is a heaven itself. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. The ruling powers shall pass away, but Jesus shall not pass away. Amen. Mountains are being removed and cast into the sea. It speaks of governments because it's prophetic saying. Mountains, governments shall be cast in. If you speak to that mountainous government, it shall be cast into the sea. Right. Oh, how many of you pray prayers against governments? Mm -hmm. David done it. He was a king. And every man and woman who is a king can pray against earthly governments and kings in authority. God, take them out. God, kill them if necessary. They are our enemies. The mm. Bible said, thou shalt not kill. It, it really means thou shalt not murder. It's Bible also says there's a time to kill. Right. So did God contradict himself? No. 
Because it's never right to murder, but it is right to kill. That's why you got the insurgent states. They hang you by the neck for committing a crime. Today, we put them in jail a few months and come back out and do the crime all over again. You see, because they don't obey God's laws, there's a time to kill. There's never a time to murder. So we can pray the death of those who are causing the death of our loved ones. If some devices came to your house, and there are Christians, no doubt, from your country here, devices have gone to their house and had their daughters by the neck and have slain them. It would be right for you to kill them according to the biblical laws. Because God condones killing. Remember, God killed the enemies in the Old Testament. Didn't he? You see it many times over. Go, destroy the lot. Wipe them all out. Take them all out. Today's mamby pamby Christianity only knows the part of Jesus. It's all love and loves everybody. Let everybody step on my toes. Let everybody slap me in the eyes. Let everybody call me the dirt and the scum of the earth. But you, Jesus, has the Emmanuel. <laughs> Woo! Emmanuel, put me on this cross. Put me on this and I will still conquer death. Hell and the grave. Amen. Emmanuel, what a God man. That's right. Do what you can, I will still be all man. That's right. And I will still pull down the powers of heavens. That's right. And I will rise up a new powers on the earth. That's right. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. You see, heavens represent authorities. Yeah. Shake authorities. Yeah. Shake Peoples, governments, tribes, nations. God is shaking all these things. It, say, it says here, <clears throat> Isaiah 110. Uncle Sister Marcy, you read it. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of, of Sodom, and give you unto the law of God, ye people of Gomorrah. Well, that's strange how Isaiah wrote that, and Sodom and Gomorrah did not exist at the time. Pastor? <laughs> so he wasn't talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah as the earth. He was talking about a people as Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom, and give you unto the law of the God, you people of Gomorrah. So God was talking to the people who disobeyed him. The earthly powers. <clears throat> In Isaiah 24 verse 1 he said, Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty, and I will make it waste. Yet scatter ab abroad the people. God sees heavens and earths as those which either obey him or those that don't. Peoples. God is shaking heavens and God is shaking the earth. And it says in, I want to go take your attention just to Matthew 24, a verse, uh, a few verses in Matthew just for a few minutes, where we read about, it says that in verse 34, Matthew 24, Assuredly I say to you, Jesus said, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away. What did he mean? It did not mean that heavens physically would pass away and the earth physically would pass away. He meant this government at that time to which he was speaking to right there and right then. Get it? We tend to think everything in the Bible is prophecy. Yes, it was. But not everything in the Bible is prophecy for you. Sometimes Jesus would prophesy to an individual, Emmanuel. He wouldn't prophesy to those in the 21st century, although there are prophecies there in the 21st century for you and me. But here he was talking about, he said, I say unto you. Look what this says here. The shakings of the heavens and the earth. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation. You aren't talking about Paul Thomas' generation, Pastor Chapin's generation. He's talking about this generation. Listen, follow this though. I want to challenge your mind. You see, we talk about expansion, but do we ever grow in our thinking? We talk about expansion, do we ever change our thinking? Yeah. We talk about expansion, do we ever develop our thinking? Do we ever think about things we're not sure of and get it right? That's expansion. 
It's not only things in my pocket and a bigger everything external. Is am I a bigger person in my thinking? Amen. Yeah, am I a bigger person in my believing? Amen. So I want to challenge you in Matthew 24 about the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. It said this generation will by no means pass away. Tip, can I have this word, Pastor? Good, good yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Amen. He said, this generation by no means pass away till all these things take place. <coughs> look, what he said, look what he says here. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But let's go back to the beginning and see what he talks about. Jesus said in verse 2, Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Surely I say to you, not one stone, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Amen. You were Jesus in a temple. Now I'm going to talk about what was shaken in order for something new to come in its place. Amen. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what will be the sign of you coming? As if he wasn't already standing there right in front of them. Mm -hmm. Think about what they said for a minute. Just bear with me for a few minutes. You was these people asking the man right in front of them, when are you going to come? Well, uh, don't you see me? When are you coming? I like to ask my brother, when are you going to come, my brother, to church? <laughs> when are you going to come on Sunday? You were here! <laughs> now, what does that make sense to you? Right. You're not sure. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> he said, uh, oh, Matthew 24. He said, all these stones are going to be tumbled up, going to be destroyed. He said, tell me when these things, when is this shaking, all these stones, this shaking on you is going to happen then? He says, uh, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? <laughs> oh. You know the Jews are still praying for Jesus to come. <laughs> I hear some preachers saying, when the Lord comes. Yet they pray for you and they say, Jesus is here. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> is Jesus here or isn't he? <laughs> he's here. Now if you're a Trinitarian, you can say he's not and get away with it. But not if you're the one God believer because all the fullness dwells in him. So the spirit is yours. Jesus, who is the spirit? The Lord is our spirit. Emmanuel. Amen. 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 Is Jesus here or isn't he? Oh, okay. Let me go and explain this then. Uh, when will be the sign of you coming on the end of the age? In the King James Version, it says the end of the world. In the New King James Version, it says the end of the age. Mm. Now, people are living with a shaking mentality today. They're saying the end of the world is going to come. Well, it says here that I will prove to you the end of the world has already been. That's why I am alive. <laughs> That's what Tommy Tony said. I'm proof that the end of the world has happened to me. That's why I'm born again and I am a new creation. Mm. Amen. My world ended the day I came to know Jesus Christ. That's right. So why are you worried about the end of the world, about what little rocket man can do, a big Trump man can do? Why are you worried about those things? Mm. Are you not a people of faith? That's right. The end of the world came to you when you were dead. Mm. You were dead in trespasses and That's sins. Right. Right. You were buried in a baptism to make sure you were dead. Amen. Oh, you, God made sure you died, all right? Amen. And then you rose again. There's no more ending now. Behold, he makes all things new. Right. Yeah. You're living in a world without end, the Bible says. Mm. World without end. Mm. But you see that word age. Uh, it, 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 it means age. Ion, not cosmos. King James had it wrong. He was a Catholic. Mm. For those of you who love the Catholic Bible, King James. I've got a Catholic Bible, King James. He was Catholic. He was a Catholic. He wrote it. And then his decree commanded people... To, to write things in that Bible according to his mentality. Believe it or not. That's why you've got so many different versions of Muslims will tell you about. But it's all good because they all believe the Bible leads us to Emmanuel. Amen? I'm picking on you, my brother. 
You won't forget your name. If, if you could ask your mom, mom, what's my name? Say, Brother Paul, remind me 20 times on the meeting what my name is. Hallelujah. Amen. Your name is prophetic. When are you going to preach? Amen. Are, you, are you planning to preach? Yes. You are. Hallelujah. You get ready, my brother. Get ready. Hallelujah. I never had the confidence to preach when I was your age. I was told, serve you, serve until you die, you know, then you get to preach in heaven, something like that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and Jesus answered to them, take heed that no one deceives you. Amen. He said, for many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, deceive many. That happened then, right? And you will hear of wars and rumors of all then. See that you will be not troubled, for all the, these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. It doesn't say they will kill Paul Thomas, kill Pastor Trippy, it doesn't kill, say they will kill Pastor Brian. It says they kill you. And that's what they've done. Every one of them was martyred. Peter crucified upside down. John put in a, a pool of oil, boiling hot oil. They will deliver you, kill you, and you will be hated for my, my name's sake. We'll have you read the book of Acts. They were hated for his name's sake. Isn't that true? And then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. This is not talking about 21st century world. This is talking about 1st century world. And, ma and many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up. They won't come from Africa. They came from where well, they came from the Middle East. I guess mm, Africa is the place where all things become, I suppose. Yes, we are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and because lawlessness will abound and love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. He was talking to them about their end, not to us, about our end. He was talking to the end, but they were about to experience. You must say, Brother Paul, what was our end? But well, think about it. They were controlled by Judaism, laws, hundreds of laws. Amen. And Jesus came, the troublemaker. They loved their temple. Oh, an incredible building with its gold and its everything else. They loved the temple. Jesus said, oh, this is going to come down. He was a troublemaker. Amen. He said, I'm going to shake all things. No all nations are going to come to me. Oh, the Jews thought all nations are going to go to Jerusalem. So we all go there on the holy holiday. He didn't mean that. He meant all nations are going to come to Jesus. Because he is the temple of the living God. And we're all going to worship in his mount. Didn't the Bible say, now are you come to Mount Zion? Now are you come to Mount Zion? You made it. You have come to Mount Zion. The city of the living God. You have come to Mount Zion. Amen. You are in the temple of God. Amen. And the temple of God is in you. Right. Knowing not that you are the temple of God. Yes. The Jews today were just not at a bit at the way they wall. The prince went there the other day. All he stood was before they wall, doing this. Touching a wall. Oh, how sad. How sad that is. The world is deceived. They do not know about this temple. Amen. Hagios. The living deity in a body. Amen. Christ in you. The hope of all glory and the glory. Amen. And there shall be a shaking and the desire of them. Amen. Shall come to the glory. Amen. We cannot build a building pastor. Incredible enough to display the glory of the living Jesus. Amen. That's why you are the temple that displays the glory of the living Jesus. Amen. He said, look at all these stones. He said, they can all come down. That's why the Jews, when our temple came down, AD 70, prophesied by Jesus. You read it about in your history books. Just a few years, 30, less than 40 years after Jesus had prophesied it, that temple was wiped to the ground. And it has never been built since. That was a prophetic word, not for us, but for them. Amen. Read Matthew 24. Matthew 22 and 3 says to them, All the woes 
Woe unto you. Woe unto you. You scribes and hypocrites. You foolish people. You talk about this yet you don't believe that. And he spoke woes to come upon them. And he said it's going to happen to you. You temple. This, this house is going to fall down. It's going to come to nothing. When shall the end be? He wasn't, we preachers today take that scripture. Now, not, if you believe there's an end to come, well, fair enough. Find it in another part of scripture, and that's okay, that's fine. I'm just talking about Matthew 24 and the end of the world. The end of the world came when Jesus confronted the world, the age, the age of the law, the Jewish age. And he said, I'm putting an end to all this. He said, from now on, now on, people are going to worship me in spirit and in truth. That's, right. Amen. That's what he meant. He, he came to violently pull down everything. That's why they hated him. Because they were disappointed in him. Oh, they thought he had come to, to set up a kingdom on earth. He said, my, my kingdom is not of this earth. It's not of this world. You see, there are worlds. Many, many different worlds. Economic world, political world, scientific world. There's the world of arts and sciences. There's the world of education. He says, but he didn't say these are my worlds. He said the earth is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the earth and the worlds. Yeah. The worlds belong to men, but the earth belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Worlds are what we make. We come into our own world. Some people are in their own world. How many of you know that? That you're in your own world. You create your own world. But Jesus said, the earth is mine. Amen. You create whatever world you want to. Your world may not lead you to God, but that's what's going to be shaken sooner or later that can make you come to God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is vitally important. Because I am a person of hope. I am a person who believes in my tomorrow. I am a person who believes in the kingdom, world without end. You see, I believe in the kingdom that's everlasting. I believe in life everlasting. I believe that I've got everlasting life now while I'm on earth. Amen, while I'm in this world. That's what I believe, everlasting life. My brother, my sister, today, have you got everlasting life? That's right. Or have you just got religion? Jesus didn't come to give you religion. Amen. Religion existed before Jesus. Amen. Jesus, religion can't hold Jesus. It's not big enough. Yeah. Jesus can't fit in a mosque. It's not big enough. Right. He can't fit in a church. It's not big enough. Mm. Jesus existed before religion. Amen. Religion exists to give man what they think is God. But Jesus didn't give man religion so that man would give man God. Jesus can come all by himself. Yeah. Show up all by himself. Let me go quickly on. He said, your house, in verse 38, your house is about to be left desolate to you. Your house is about, all oh, Jerusalem, that's what he said, verse 37, chapter 23. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you as a hen and her chicks, but you wouldn't let me. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more. Till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This generation, I say to you, will by no means pass away till all these things are fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. Now let me go quickly on my last point, chapter 3 in Second Peter chapter 3. It says there, the scoffers shall come in the last days. He's not talking about our days. Because we read in Hebrews 9.29, Hebrews 9.26, if you find that, can you read it? And verse 27, where they've got it, Hebrews 9.26 and 27, please. Hebrews 9.26. That's right, Pastor. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once... At the end of the age, ages, he has appeared to put away sin Amen. by the sacrifice of himself. Amen. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this judgment, mm. so
So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of, ma of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time Whoa, apart from Whoa, sin amen. for salvation. Thank you, Pastor. Did you get that? At the end of the age, he would appear. He has appeared to put away by the sacrifice of himself. So when was the end of the age? When he appeared to put away the sacrifice of himself. That's fine. Nah. <laughs> Have you read your Bible? Amen. When was the end of the age? When he appeared to put away the That's sacrifice right. of himself. Right. When did that happen? When he died on Calvary? Right. Was that the end of the age? What King James said, the end of the world? Mm. Oh. And then what did he say again? In verse 28, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those shall he appear a second time for salvation. How many of you can declare he came to me to save me? Amen. One of you. Okay. Amen. I'm glad he came to me. He appeared unto Paul, did he not? That's to right. save him. Amen. He appeared to this Paul to save him. Emmanuel, has he appeared to you to save you? Amen. Amen. You know you're saved, right? You know you've got God inside you, a God nature, is that right? Mm, I'm just finding out now. Tell me as if you were real. Let me try it. Have you got God in you? Are you sure about that? Uh, right? You got Christ in you? Yeah, okay. You aren't you sure you got that? No, 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 I'm in an hour in. Uh, you gotta be sure, you know? You're not sure. You're not sure. Come on, you. Well, come on, gentlemen. Come on. You know what it means to come out? It means to leave your seat. I'm picking on you because you're my friend. I like it. I only pick on some you don't like. Oh, you're tall, aren't you? You gotta, you gotta sit back down and say, No, 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 don't you. Oh, I'm getting a little shake. I feel like a David in front of Goliath. Brother, you've got God in you. Christ in you. God said, I chose Emmanuel. Beginning of the world. Amen. Amen. This was God's idea before your mom and dad ever thought of you. Imagine that, that your Heavenly Father thought of you at the same time He created the heavens and the earth. I mean, I can't think what I'm going to have, but I can think about what I'm going to have for tea when I go home, but I can't think about what I'm going to have tomorrow. But God thought of you all the aeons down through time. And somehow we knew that your mom and dad would call you Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. They knew that. Yeah, that's right. Brother, you've got Christ in you. You yeah. are like Jesus was God, man. So you are, in a sense, mm. God, man. Mm. Right? Mm. I know that's a bit, mm, I'm not sure. In his new creation, man. See, what we see in the flesh is the flesh. But you don't know him, the man on the inside, mm. is the new nature, Amen. Christ in you, Amen. the hope of glory. Amen. My brother, next time I talk to you, say, brother Paul, I got God in me. Amen. And when you stand up on that platform, you'll be able to preach like God, Amen. talk like God, sing like God, Amen. and worship God and show everyone. It's hot. Please forgive me for keeping you, but I got. I just got to share this. I said, right, okay. <clears throat> Knowing this, that in the last time scoffers will come. Two Peter, three verse, three. Knowing this, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to your own lust, and saying, "Where is the promise of his coming?" Talking about that coming. We just said, seen in Hebrews, two comings. The scoffers here. Peter was with Jesus. Peter wrote this about Jesus in the time of Jesus, and he said that the scoffers here saying, "When are you going to come?" That's why he had to appear in the Mount of Transfiguration, the two prophets. Because he was showing them that he was greater than Moses and the prophets, right? Okay. <clears throat> so where is the promise of you coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth, standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that existed then perished. Being flooded with water, the world that what existed then, that world ended. Ah, it's another revelation. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment. Ooh! 
Beloved, do not forget that this one thing that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand days is Amen. one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward all, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord is come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away Amen. with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It must be talking about today, because it's pretty hot. Both the earth and the world that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, think about what manner of people you are. Looking for and hasten the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will burn with fervency. He's not talking about California being on fire. He is talking about the elements. What are the elements? Dominic was Dominic. Don't let you go to school. Do they sing this? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They don't probably don't sing that. Jesus died for you and me. What's it? O, P, W, God. Is... No, 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 whatever. <laughs> the elementary things, right? They go to elementary school. That's right. They learn the first things, the That's beginnings. Right. Right. The beginnings, my brother. The elementary things. So the word of God will say that the elementary things are going to be dissolved. Right. The law that brought you to Jesus is going to be put to one side. And a greater one is going to come. Because they're going to be burned up with the fervent heat and the fire. Right. The elementary things. The things that brought you into an understanding of right and wrong. But which cannot serve you. But the Jews were serving the law fanatically, thinking that the law would get them into heaven, thinking that the law would make them right and wrong. So when Jesus came, he said, all these things of the law are going to be burned up with fire. The elements are going to be burned up with a fervent heat. He wasn't talking about the end of the world. He was talking about the end of the law so that you and I could have grace. And coming to an end. Grace has appeared to us. Amen. Amen. Grace has appeared to us. Amen. Your salvation does not depend on the world ending and you having a mark of the beast. Right. It depends on you, whether or not you are a beast. And whether or not you brought that beast to Jesus. Right. The beast is the beast in me. I've said it many times. I was in me. The mark of the beast. Is the mark of the unclean man. The man that has not the nature of the deity in him. That's why I asked my brother, you've got the nature of the deity I knew you have. But brother, you've got the nature of God in you. A brother there. From up to top. You've got the God in you, my brother. You have on you. You have. Have you received the spirit of God? You received the Holy Ghost? You have. Good. Amen. I'm just going to see you say yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We must be assured of our salvation that, that I'm not trying to be good Paul. Amen. I'm good in Christ. That's right. And if I'm not good in Christ, forget trying to be good. Because right. it, it just won't happen. That's right. My friends, <clears throat> heaven and earth shall pass away. That's right. Kingdom shall come, kingdom shall go. Mm. Systems shall come, systems shall go. Monarchs shall come, monarchs shall go. But the word of God abides forever. And it is by the word of God that you and I are saved. Amen. When you are saved, the end of the world comes for you. Now I know this is contradicting a lot of what we hear because people don't study the Bible verse by verse by verse by verse. They just preach a good message. That's it. That's right. But you've got to study your Bible. Amen. Otherwise you'll be deceived. Yeah. If you don't read your Bible with interest and clarity, yeah. then you're going to be deceived. You're going to think of people like me as heretics. Amen. And I am either a heretic or a true man of God. Mm. The end of the world came for me. Salvation is not in the end of the world and, and I was trying to scare you in case you, the Antichrist comes after you and you have the mark of the beast. And, no, no. Jesus came as he, he, he said, those are going to burn up with fire. Right. He that believeth on me. Do you believe in Jesus? Amen. Are you born again today? 
Amen. Or let's all stand. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the patience of everybody.